So today's video, we are going to be covering over a starter guide for a lot of the people that are going to be coming into Honkai Impact Part 2 with being a either starter player, returning player, or if you're a veteran player, hi, I guess. <laughs> but today we're going to be going over a lot of the things that I guess you could say are the core foundation or the routine that you're going to be going through in Honkai Impact. I'm going to be reminding you of a couple of things that you need to do on your journey to being able to play this game for a good amount of time. And then also the things that you need to take note of as a starter player or returning player to get you in the right direction to understand a lot of the mechanics in this game because there are a couple of things that have changed with part two and there are a couple of things that are different from the other hoyoverse games as well so i'll try to be guiding you through that with simple terms that match the games like genshin impact and honkai star rail so we're gonna go ahead and start with this starter guide with the main thing which is for step one you do want to pay attention to your starter manual which is usually down here in the middle somewhere in the middle down there and this is going to be where you get a lot of your task a lot of the things that are going to help you understand the routine and the foundations of the game when it comes to leveling up a character the weapon the stigmata also living through the routine that we usually go through which is clearing certain modes out doing them when they refresh the next time because we do have modes that refresh a couple of times throughout the week and we also have modes that refresh weekly so there are a couple of things you do on a weekly basis that are pretty fun because they do change very frequently and it's not the same experience every single time because a lot of things do change when you do these modes because me either a boss changes the enemies change the typing of the elements that you need for each team changes so there's a lot of really cool stuff that comes with this game when it comes to the refreshes and the end game modes we have i think honkai impact does a really really great job and giving us a full end game experience which a lot of people really want from these hoyoverse games so besides the starter manual get that done you get a lot of really great stuff the resources the characters that are supports for a lot of different teams are actually in there so that is something you 100 want from that starter manual and and then the coins, the XP to jumpstart your way into part two. A lot of really great stuff from there. So make sure to go ahead and get that done for number one. Now, number two, we're going to go into the next thing, which everyone wants to get into, because I know everyone wants to understand the gotcha system in this game. And even for veterans alike or even returning players, you're going to be shocked at a lot of the things that part two has changed. And for the new players, this might sound like a godsend to you when it comes to this versus Star Rail and Genshin, which you go into the supply tab by pressing the supply button, the supply button again. And this is where your summons are going to take place. Now, for this game, right now the pity is going to be 90 for each character and for this game something that i'm going to shock a lot of y'all with if you haven't already known this honkai impact doesn't have 50 50s you get the character once you hit pity and thankfully enough in this game we not only have the guaranteed character but we're also going to be getting the brand new part two characters alongside this with some older part one characters the part two characters are all you really care about with the dupes that you're going to be getting you can obtain these characters if you don't get them somehow you like first pull senadina through free to play currency so you don't have to worry if you don't get a copy of them i think Corla actually has a card from an event that you can get so all of her stuff is going to be well taken care of you're going to be getting her full loadout for free through login events through events period so you're fine helia herself she is a different case if you don't get her you might have to do another multi <laughs> oh wait no wrong if you don't get her she actually is able to be bought for free to play currency as well so you're 100 fine there it's her gear that we have to pull for but i'll talk about that later the battle suit supply is going to be where you summon for your characters and then for your equipment supply is where you're going to be summoning for your weapons and stigmata for people that don't know the stigmata in this game do comprise of three different pieces t m and b tm and b are the pieces that you're going to be using for each slot i guess you could say we have a two-piece effect and a three-piece effect but for the most part you don't really run two-piece and then an off-piece unless you're struggling for those stigmata or you're waiting to put in a new stigmata just because it's usually the case that if you're going for a character you're usually going to pull all their pieces and one big thing to know is that usually when you do pick out a character you do have to stay for their weapon as well for the most part because a lot of these weapons as the saying goes the weapon is the character for the most part and i would say that holds true for a lot and i mean a lot of different characters because you usually get core passives core weapon skills things that synergize very greatly with these characters that no other weapon will be able to provide when it comes to the signature versus the actual characters themselves now i know that might sound like a turnoff but i do have to say one thing and one thing that a lot of people are going to be shocked about once i tell you about this change they did in part two that actually makes this so much better so for part two the weapon banner you are guaranteed the weapon in 60 pulls so that sounds really cool right but the other thing that's cool is that there's no such thing as an off-rate weapon or off-rate stigmata on this banner. 
every single bolty that you do or every single time you hit a four star pity you are guaranteed to get not only possibly the weapon but also the stigmata themselves so every multi you do stigmata for the character you want another multi stigmata for the character you want another multi maybe i got the weapon oh but now i'm missing the stigmata but with another change they made to part two you can go into a certain menu and i'm not gonna specifically like show like where everything is at when it comes to this specifically because it will tell you how to make these i remember that when i was doing the beginner guide it shows you where this menu is but yes you can make part two stigmata so if i'm missing those two stigmata after i already pulled the weapon i can quite literally craft it with a certain material which makes gearing out a player or a character very very easy compared to how it was in part one and when i mean how easy it is i've had nightmares <laughs> with how bad the pulls are versus part one to what now we have in part two so we are guaranteed a lot more of what we want with the gems we're using on these characters which makes this such an enjoyable experience to summon on you're no 50 50 you're guaranteed the character and then same thing for the weapon you're guaranteed the stigmata and you're guaranteed the weapon at a certain point so that makes everything so much better so the battle suit supply is going to be for the character the equipment is going to be for the weapon and the stigmata and then the astral op supply we won't get these very frequently but this will be something that does come up a little bit of time and this is going to be more of a luxury banner right now i do have to see what this is versus the dream secret we get for free at level 30 for the astral op system but usually if these follow suit like how the elves are which we had previously this astral op is going to be a very luxury type of banner something that you would only want if you want like a competitive edge versus a lot of the other players in the leaderboard pvp that we have but other than that not really needed for a lot of different accounts for the most part you can skip these but it's up to you if you want these or not and then the next banner that does hold a lot of importance is the dorm supply as well these specifically as every other gacha game you do not want to use your premium currency on this banner you will get a multitude amount of these dorm supply cards which allow you to summon on this banner for free and i even have 53 on me waiting for a new s rank to drop on this banner because they do update this banner very frequently well if i say frequently that's a little bit of a stretch but they do update this banner from time to time so you can literally just wait on using these when it comes to crystals don't use them at all wait and get your storm supply cards and do your singles do your multis depending on how good you are at saving and just chill at that don't waste any other crystals you may want a certain character from here i promise it's not worth it to waste your crystals please do not do that only use them on the battle suit supply and also the equipment supply for the characters that you like and right now we do have two weapon banners out right now which is senadina's which is her stigmata and her weapon and we also have helia's as well which is the a rank she has her weapon as well with the stigmata usually these characters that come with the a rings usually don't have weapons like this so this is very exciting to see how they're trying to work this out but we'll have to see as time goes on but as i said before as a quick summary really quickly again battle suit supply is the character equipment supply is the character's weapon and stigmata and then the dorm supply is the standard banner itself so you gotta remember that those are each ones because it can get a little bit confusing because of the way these format because sometimes we have so many banners out at the same time like outfit supply astral supply firepower supply equipment that's like there's like a whole line of them and sometimes it gets confusing i understand so just make sure to remember these tabs specifically and you should be able to work your way through it as until you learn about the other banner types going on to the next thing which is going to be the characters themselves which is in the valkyrie menu this is where all your characters are going to be housed and it basically boils down to a couple of things that are of importance as I said before, the weapon itself is usually the heart of the character or where the character gets most of their stuff from. And this is where you'll get them and equip them onto the character. And some of these weapons do have core paths that only just work with that one character. I don't know if it works specifically on here. There you go. Star Impression Equip Bonus. So as you can see, there are some certain passives that are only available for that specific character. So sometimes you aren't able to perfectly put another weapon on another character. There are some times where shared characters can share best in slot weapons and best in slot uh, stigmata but they're very far few between so if you're going to be pulling for a character make sure you have enough to save up for their weapon but with how amazing the summon system is now in honkai impact part 2 it makes it a lot easier to build out these characters so this is such a great update and then going on with the stigmata these are the different types of character sets that we are going to be having in the game and these do have the pre-rolled effects on them already you don't have to worry about subsets or anything like that the subsets that we do have 
are very very minor they can help with the flow and smoothness of the character but only are really worth it if you want that competitive edge against other players in the leaderboard pvp that we have but for general content you don't need to worry about this for the most part and then we do have the traces or talents which are our skills and these correlate to the level that you have your character which we have right here mine is level 80 if i'm not wrong and these coincide with your account level so actually if we go to the main hub and we go to where i'm at right now i'm level 88 which i'm the max level this is the max level and the max you need to be to be able to max out your characters is going to be level 80. So say you're level 40 and you go back into the character menu, you will only be able to level up these characters to level 40. So you have to remember that. But the good thing is that we don't have to have any ascension quests, no ascension material. You just straight up level up your characters here. And same thing with the skill and the traces or the talent. You don't need a separate material. You just use coins and you unlock it. Boom, you're done. So it makes it very easy to be able to build out these characters and level up these characters once you get to a certain point in the game. Now, one thing specifically about these characters themselves, we have four different damage types and a good amount of different character types. The damage types right now that we have are ice, fire, lightning, and physical. I may be forgetting one. I don't think I did. But those are the four general types of damage types. We do get these buffed from time to time when it comes to certain events or certain modes. So that's the time where you would pay attention to it. And then also, if you press the button that's right next to the level button, you get this chart that shows you the character types, not only showing you what current character type your character is, but also what is disadvantaged and what is advantageous to it. So if you have something that is advantageous to it, I, I'm literally trying to like buffer right now. <laughs> when you get something that is advantageous towards it, you are going to be doing more damage to it. Same thing if it's disadvantaged towards it, you're going to be doing less damage to it. And if you're doing something in regards to someone with no interaction, like how this mech has no interaction with image, you're going to be basically doing a neutral type of interaction where there's going to be no gain damage nor no loss damage. So this is something that is really great to have in game to show you what your character currently is and what you want to go against with it. Now you can try to brute force your way through the disadvantaged fights, but you are going to be doing a lot less damage. And we do have our certain niches when it comes to teams not every team is in mono type but it is usually mono element like having physical characters with physical but you wouldn't have three quantum characters together because usually they all flip flop in the types that they have but the characters damage usually basically stays the same with lightning supports wanting lightning characters ice supports wanting ice characters that type of stuff usually team building is not very hard in this game but you do have to understand which characters you specifically want a cool thing about this game when it comes to Honkai Impact is, yes, Fischl's in this game, <laughs> is that a lot of these characters, when it comes to the supports in this game and also the different types of DPS in this game, a lot of them are free. A lot of characters that are really good in this game do a lot of stuff for a lot of different teams and are usually free, which if you go to the supply button right here, go to the shop button on the left, go through all the way to the bottom where basic currency is and then go where fragments are. I think they'll show you this menu in the starter menu as well, but you do have a material called Asteroid, which is a free to play currency that you get throughout dailies and other types of missions where you can get these fragments, which do unlock characters and are dupes as well for these characters and just make them absolutely strong. Some of the best characters in the game for their typings, and yes, Helia and Coralie are going to be in here to be able to grind out their dupes. You do have other options in here that are going to help you out with building out your teams and getting a good amount of characters. You can literally build one of the better bleed teams in this game with just free units. This adult Grisio right here, for example, with the young Grisio down here and also Susanna down here, you can literally build a full-on free-to-play bleed team that does massive damage. The only part that's going to be, I guess you could say a problem, is that you won't have their weapon or their stigmata will i know how that's going to happen in regards to part two no but that will be i guess a topic for another day but there's going to be a multitude of shops right here that we are going to be looking at in the future when it comes to as you progress through the game and i know the starter manual takes you into a couple of these but as you move through the game these become streamlined whereas like you unlock this shop because of this mode and you're going to be able to flip through each one and see oh, okay so that's the one i need to go to so this shop section right here usually isn't as overwhelming once you start unlocking the things that go for it because not everything here is unlocked for as far as i know for you and then going into 
The next part, besides the summons, besides the Valkyries, that's what I said before, the Astral Ops system is the new mechanic that we have in the game, and you do get a free one for free, or you get your main character for free for the Astral Ops system. You should be fine with this for now, especially if you're going to be getting Senadina for this start of part two, and these banners last a long time, so you should be able to have a chance to get her if you're grinding out the gems that you have an enormous supply of if you're a starter character. Um, same thing with this character. She's just very luxury. You don't really need to worry about this. I will be testing out what the difference is between them if it's that much of a massive difference but if you're doing general content like story and casually grinding out your modes you probably don't need that luxury banner type of equipment right there when it comes to the routines for the dailies that you're going to be doing a lot of the things that come from this do come from a lot of different tabs which can be confusing but i'm going to take you into each one step by step mainly you're going to go into the attack button right here which houses a lot of your content again for the most part you're not gonna have to worry about a lot of this being in your face because this opens up as you level up your account but going into the start menu and possibly even the recommended tab because i've already done my dailies it's not going to pop up right here but for the start tab you have the material expedition this is where you're going to be getting all of your things like the xp chips the asteroid all the materials you need to send your characters when it comes to the or the stigmata in the weapon i mean and that's where you're gonna get all your materials for that and then you can see the asteroid right here you can farm that out so you can get more characters more fragments more dupes it helps you a fat ton when it comes to building out your account and then when it comes to the other materials that you are going to be going throughout without that material expedition the missions up here in the top left are going to be your to-do list and you want to basically fill this out or complete this until you hit to uh, 600 battle pass experience and this is the max you can get every day to be able to work towards your battle pass which has an assortment of different materials depending on the tiers that you buy you can get fragments for characters through the very expensive tier and then more of the resources that you're probably going to use in the second tier and then basic necessities for the first one which is a really cool thing and then you do have a little currency as well that gives you new gear and also characters as well that do rotate depending on a certain amount of battle passes and then some resources down here as well with other currency that comes from this battle pass so we have the material expedition that we have right here in the start menu we have the missions tab that has its to-do list which has a streamlined way of showing you where to go for a lot of these missions so for the let's say elysian realm if i go in here and I want to finish this task, I go to go, and it'll take me to the tab where it's at, Elysian Realm. There you go. So the, you get to do what you want with clicking on the go button. And then you have two other tabs. Yes, I know this all over the place. I'm trying to take you to the floor. <laughs> um, and then going into the Armada tab, which is usually your guild or clan, you get to get into the commission uh, tab, and you're going to be going through and donating supplies. This is how you get your currency through this, and you're going to be able to grab a reward, which can come from an assortment of different things. And remember when I said you could possibly get a dorm supply pass from a lot of different sources, this is one of them. And then after you donate your stuff, you get your reward from this tab. You can go down into the door menu, and this is where the teapot is or the customize your own place type of feature is. This is where the dorm is going to be. I'm not going to click on that. That's for you to explore and for you to do. But for the most part, the two things are going to basically be a daily to count for is going to be the coin collection, which you can collect this capsule and you're going to be getting the golden coins from this. And then your errands in the top right are going to be your expeditions that you're going to be using for Honkai Impact and this is going to be like I said your expedition so you're going to be getting materials from this that drop these little cards that you can buy resources with and then also you can grab crystals from time to time if you're lucky enough by dispatching a certain amount of characters that match a certain amount of characteristics so this is a really cool thing to have and make sure to fill out as time goes on lastly I think for the most part besides summoning characters weapons stigmata and the dailies i think i just named everything if i'm not wrong <laughs> and also the astral op system the last thing is the story itself the events and everything here i'm gonna leave that for star no, i was gonna say starro honkai impact to explain because like i said they do open it up as time goes on and there'll be i chance saying hey you should probably try this event this event's this this fans to that and you don't really get exposed to this until you get to that level so i'll leave it to honkai impact to explain all of this because they do it in a good streamlined way that doesn't overwhelm you so that should be there for that the main thing i do want to talk about real quick before we end this off is the story portion of this a lot of people do wonder if you do need to do part one story, which is the moon's origin finality before part two story. And with how much I've played of part two story, which is a good bit, probably around two hours worth of story. 
Right now, there aren't any massive references or anything very hypercritical that you do need to go through in the story to enjoy it. It seems very disconnected from everything part one. And I'm sure as time goes on, we will be referencing and looking back at part one very, very soon. But right now, in the starter and introductory version of the story, they're doing such an amazing job at providing a high quality story that doesn't piggyback off part one as heavily as you would expect it to be with how monumental and how crazy part one is. So if you want to understand, should you do part two before part one? If that's what you want to do, if you want to be able to sympathize with these characters that you're pulling on or gain a relationship with these characters that you're looking at, pulling on all that type of stuff, then go ahead and do part two and then finish that out. Then maybe go back to part one. You can do either or. You can do it in chronological order, which is part one into part 1.5, which is Dance of Life and Death. And then you can go on to part two or you can just do part two, work your way from part one, and then go all the way back up to part two. And depending on how you want to do it, I'm sure as time goes on, we will be referencing and talking about things that did happen previously in the story. But if you just want to go ahead and dive deep into part two story, it seems like that's a viable option with how much I've seen them try to dance around subjects that do relate to part one. So other than that, that's going to be it for the most part of all the things in Honkai Impact that needed explaining. I know a lot of people would have wanted help on how the character system works on how the actual supply or summoning works in this game and just to guide you in the right direction i think honkai epic does a good job in trying to section off stuff that you probably won't have at the start of your journey and then giving it to you in segments which is a really good thing to not overwhelm you at the start you probably won't have as full of a screen as i do right now but on that thank you guys so much for watching all the way to the end of this video let me know if you're going to be playing honkai impact if you're going to be trying it out i think Part two is just an amazing start to a lot of people's journeys. So on that, thank you guys so much for watching. See you on the next one and peace.